Yes, okay, we are talking about uh, unification, which is this fundamental characteristic of uh, logic programming. And uh, we tried some, uh, or showed some example of uh, uh, unification, and uh, um, I'm going to use uh, the one that's on the slide here now. I'm going to say f of x is equal to f of g of y. Now, one solution to this uh, equation is this substitution theta is equal to x plus g of i. And that's actually the one that I get back from Prolog here. Because if I apply this to the uh, two terms in the equation, it makes them syntactically equal. So, when I do, so how does my substitution look like? The substitution looks like this, it's, it's called, uh, uh, I'm co let's use this for theta. Uh, it says uh, x mapped to g of y. So x is bound to g of y. So this is the way it looks like. And when I apply this substitution to f of x, which is on the left hand side of my which is the, this is the term on the left hand side of the equal sign and apply the substitution to that term so I'm basically doing f of x theta then I get f of x and then I'm supposed to apply the substitution to this term and then that's obviously f of g of y because I'm supposed to substitute all occurrences of the variable x with g of y. So that's why I get f of g of y. Um, now if I do the same for the right hand side, do the same for the right hand side of the term, then I'm supposed to do f of g of y and apply v to it, that will give me f of g of y and then apply the substitution to it and what do I get back? Well simply f of g of y unchanged because the substitution says well substitute all the occurrences of x with g of y but there is no occurrence of x in this term here so it doesn't have any effect on the term. So now you can see that when I apply the substitution f to f of x and the substitute substitution theta I mean the substitute in theta to f of x and the substitution theta to f of g of y I get the same term so by applying this uh, substitution the two terms have been made syntactically equivalent and what we say here is that the substitution theta unifies the two terms of this equation. The, t the substitution unifies the two terms and it is therefore called a unifier. So a substitution is called a unifier if it unifies the two terms. Uh, now notice what we said here in, in, in uh, point two here, that one solution is the substitution x uh, slash g of y. So this actually suggests that there might be some more solutions. And indeed that is uh, true. Notice this substitution x uh, slash g of y, y g of a and y slash a is also a unifier. Is that true? Is it also a unifier? 
where we can just make sure so let me, now we have another unifier which looks like this x is g of a and y is bound to a if we apply this unifier to f of x and we also have to apply that unifier to f of g of y what do we get then well we get f of x and we apply the unifier to it what do we get there well we're supposed to bind x to g of a and x is on the is part of this term here so we are transforming it to f of g of a we're all supposed to, supposed to bind y to a but there is no y here in this term so it doesn't have any effect now for the second one we do the same thing we s apply the unifier to f of g of y and the unifier looks like this and what do we get now well we're supposed to uh, uh, bind x to g of a but there's no x in the term and we're supposed to bind the variable y to the constant a so that there is a y here so the result of this is also f of g of a so we've shown here that uh, theta which looks like this x slash g of a y slash a is also a unifier because when we apply the unifier to the two terms the term on the left of the uh, equal sign and the term on the right on the equal sign we get the same term so they are syntactically equivalent and here we say that there is another unifier even and there is a third unifier and so on and you can test yourself if these are also unifiers so basically what we're saying is that there are many possible unifiers but actually prolog only came up with uh, a single one and this single one is actually what is called the most general unifier so prolog comes up with the most general unifier so all these substitutions here that are in this uh, fifth bullet point here are less general than the original substitution our original substitution was simply x uh, bound to g of y but then we showed that there are other possible substitutions that exist but those are less general than v so each of them can be obtained by composing uh, i mean theta that's what uh, we use theta for substitution so each of them can be obtained by composing theta with some other appropriate substitution for example uh, the one that we mentioned here x maps to g of a and y maps to a is actually equivalent to using the original the most general sub, uh, substitution the most general unifier and then composing it with another unifier um, so how was our, our original unifier it looked like this this was our most general unifier and if we compose that one if we do theta composed with this unifier what do we get well we do get something like the original one we add this one but notice here that we're not only adding y is bound to a because we have a y here so we we change that y to an um, a so in that case we actually have the second unifier that we looked at so the second unifier that we looked at which was the one 
stated here on the slide is actually can can be found by composing our most general unifier theta with another unifier so it is in this sense that we say that theta is the most general unifier of x and g of y now this problem of determining whether a set of equations of terms can be unified is decidable. This is a decidable problem. The, the, we can write an algorithm that uh, solves this uh, problem. And this is, uh, this is uh, by Robinson. He is the one that came up with this in 1965. And uh, the proof is a, is a kind of a constructive proof in the sense that it, it really provides an algorithm for uh, solving unification. So for every set of equation this algorithm produces the most general unifier if the set is unifiable at all and returns a failure if the set is not unifiable. What does it mean that, it, that the set is not unifiable? Well, for example, we saw this is a these are, are two terms that are not unifiable. I get a false back. Um, another example would be say, okay, is g of x, you, is it possible to unify g of x and f of y? No, it's not possible because g and f are two distinctive constants. So there's no way that we can come up with a unifier that makes these two terms syntactically equivalent. Now the the detail of this uh, algorithm is in in section twelve four three in the in the textbook, and I encourage you to to uh, uh, read that one to get uh, uh, the price the precise steps of the algorithm. But uh, I just want to conclude by by looking at uh, uh, the individual steps that are the result of the of the algorithm when. Uh, trying to unify a, a given set of equations. So what we're starting with here are uh, two equations. That's uh, that's the starting point. It's called it's called e here, uh, number one. So what do we have? We have f of x comma b is equal to f of g of y comma w. That's our first e equation, and the second one is h of x comma y is equal to h of z comma w. So if we type this in to uh, a logic language, logic language interpreter like Prolog, uh, Prolog will have to find a solution to this and it uses the un unification uh, procedure to, to do that. So let's uh, try to imitate what uh, happens. Now in order for, if we look at the first equation here, we have f of x comma b and we have f of g of y comma w. Now in order for this to be syntactically equivalent, x has, be, has to be bound to g of y. So we say here x is equal to g of y and this b has to be bound to w. Uh, so that's our that's our first result. Notice that I haven't touched the second equation here. It, it's un, unchanged. Uh, in the next step, I'm going to use the binding that I found in the first step to and apply it to the second equation. So now notice that in the second equation I have an x there. So that x has already been bound to g of y, so I can substitute the x inside the term h of x comma y with g of y. That's what I've done here in the third step. Now in the fourth step, the only thing I'm doing is, uh, well, I'm doing a couple of things actually. I'm reversing the equation here which says b is equal to w and write it as w is equal to b. And this is 
remember we talked about this earlier this is possible because uh, we're just talking about syntactical equivalence this is not like an assignment statement in an imperative language so b is equal to w is the same as w is equal to b now the reason i did this is because i have a w which is an unknown variable here in one of the terms so now when I write it as w is equal to b, then I can simply substitute this w with b because I have bound w with or b to w. In the fifth step here, I In the fifth step, I look at this second equation here, and in order for h of g of y comma y to be equal to h of z comma b, I bind g of y to z, g of y to z, and y to b. Very similarly as we did in, in the beginning step. Uh, then in the next step, I simply reverse the equation. So instead of g of y is equal to z, I say z is equal to g of y. And in the very last step, I'm using the fact that y is actually bound to b, and I uh, apply that substitution to the term g of y, to get z is equal to g of b. So at that point, I have bound every single variable in the original query to some constants. So x is equal to g of b, w is equal to b, and z is equal to g of b, and y is equal to b. So what I have computed is the most general unifier, of the initial set and it looks like this x substituted with g of b w substituted with b z substituted with g of b and y substituted with b so this is actually the result of the unification algorithm but as i said earlier you can look up the individual step of the algorithm and and study uh, how it gradually comes up with uh, this uh, substitution. And maybe we should conclude by using prolog to see what we get if we type in this query in prolog. So I'm asking prolog, can you solve this for me? Um, I have two equations. This is the first equation, f of x comma b equal to f of g of y comma w, and also that h of x comma y is equal to h of z comma w. Is there some solution to this query? Yes, and it's not a big surprise because we have already gone through it. It says x is equal to z, and z is equal to g of b. So notice x is equal, we said that the most general unifier was x is bound to g of b and z is bound to g of b. But that of course means that x is the same as z. So both x and z are g of b. Uh, and then w is bound to b and y is bound to b as well. So that's why Prolog says y is equal to w and w is bound to b. So this is really the same solution as we in a way computed by hand here.